everybody. I'm Sean Stepinski at Refrigeration Sales. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to use the FireRite Pro as a manometer. A lot of guys use this as a combustion analyzer, but you know one of the features is it can measure pressure. So I'm going to show you today how to use this to check things like uh, total static pressure, which is one of the more important readings that we take. When we take total static pressure, what we're looking for is the total resistance value in the ducting system on the supply side and the return side. When you buy a piece of equipment like this furnace, this furnace comes set up and it says it is certified to give you a certain amount of airflow at a certain static pressure. If you exceed that static pressure, your airflow is compromised. Or in other words, airflow is directly proportionate to whatever the static pressure is in the ductwork. So we want to keep the static pressure under the maximal allowable setting that is listed on the unit. Uh, the guys always go and look at the name tags. It'll give you the model number, the serial number, uh, temperature rise, gas pressure. But well, one thing that is also listed on that nameplate is the maximum certified external static pressure. On the nameplate of the unit, you will find important information like the model number, serial number, voltage, gas pressure, temperature rise, things like that. But one of the things that is listed on this piece of equipment you can see right here, maximum external static pressure. That is the maximum allowable external static pressure for the unit. That is what it's certified against. If you stay underneath that, which means you'll get all the airflow delivery that the equipment is rated for. If you go over that, the airflow becomes compromised. So you always want to stay under the maximum level. Typically residentially, we're dealing with 0.5 inches of water column as a maximum level. That is typically in the cooling mode. In the heating mode, furnaces are rated without an air conditioning coil because there's no guarantee that the furnace has air conditioning. It could be one without an A-coil. So furnaces by themselves are typically rated much lower for airflow. So in the heating mode, they might be rated at 0.15, 0.25 inches of water column, which is considerably less than the maximal level. So if you're in the heating mode, checking your total external static pressure, you always want to stay under what the maximum level is because if you're at the maximum when you're in the heating mode, when you go to air conditioning mode, you're certainly going to exceed that. And at that point, the airflow is going to be compromised considerably. Now, when you're checking your static pressure, um, static pressure being defined by what we're talking about is the pressure that's exerted on all the walls of the duct uh, all the way around equally. Uh, there's different types of pressure for this particular portion. We're not going to go into all the pressures because there is velocity pressure, total pressure, things like that. But specifically today, I want to talk about static pressure or the resistance that's in that duct system. And one way you can do that is by making two holes into the system. What we want to know is we want to evaluate the entire system, the supply side and the return side, all at one time. So you have to punch two holes into the system in order to get those numbers. One hole you have to have is between the furnace and the first piece of resistance. Typically, that first piece of resistance is an A-coil if you have air conditioning. So you actually have to be between the furnace and the coil. So that is the first hole that you would have to make. The second hole you would have to make is between the filter and the furnace. You have to be between these two and not on this side. So you have to be between the filter and the furnace. A lot of times you can access that right through the blower door as long as you have a good seal you know, on the blower door itself. When accessing the reading, I recommend you use something like this. Uh, this is what we refer to as a static probe. If you look at it, it has been at 90 degrees. It is actually welded shut on the end and it has holes on the side. When you are checking static pressure, since it is the pressure that is exerted on all the walls of the duct all the way around, your inlet, your sensing probe inlet, has to be 90 degrees to the airflow. So if the airflow is going this way, your inlet sensing probe is this way. But so when you look at these, when you put this into the ductwork and your supply of air is going this way, you point it in the direction of the airflow, you'll see that the sensing probes are 90 degrees to the airflow. Airflow is going this way, inlet sensing probe is 90 degrees to the airflow. So I recommend you use something like this because if you use a regular probe that has a hole in the end, when you stick it into the duct, if it moves up or down or left or right, it will change your readings considerably. So if you, to be as accurate as possible, use something like this as a static probe. What I did is I have the 5 Pro running as a manometer. I have two hoses. I'm running it as a dual manometer. So I take my static probes and I attach it to the end of the hoses. And before I insert my probes into the duct system, I want to zero out the meter. And one way I can zero out the meter here is I scroll down and then I hit the enter button and it should zero the meter out. So the first reading we're going to take is I'm going to take the static probe, I'm going to put it between the coil and the furnace, and I'm going to point this in the direction of the airflow. What I want to know with that reading, that is a positive reading, what I want to know is when that air comes out of that furnace, how difficult is it for the pushy air through the coil, up the duct, turn left, right, 
you know, down the extended plenum system, out the orifices or the registers. How much pressure is built up right here? How hard is it for that blower motor to push that air? So that's the first reading we need. The second reading we need is on the return side. And the same thing is, we want to take this probe and we bring it down here. And I'm going to use the blower door section right here. So when I put that in, the second reading, and this is a negative reading because it is on the return side, it is the suction side. So what I want to know on this particular side is the air that's being drawn across, how hard is it for the blower motor to pull that air across the filter, all the way down the grills, the ductwork? How difficult is it to pull that air? So once I have those two numbers, basically what happens is this is a negative number, this is a positive number. When you take the total or the sum of the external static pressure, you add those numbers up. In this particular case, by using the FireRite Pro, it does the math for you if you're bad at numbers, but you could do it one at a time. When you take this number, this number will be a positive number. This number down here will be a negative number. But when you take the sum or the total of the two, you forget about it being positive and negative. Just add the two numbers up, and that will give you your total. In this particular case, the meter does that for me. So in this particular system, I am running right now a total static pressure in ESP at 0.55 inches of water column which is just above, slightly just above what our maximum allow level is for this furnace. I am running continuous fan right now. Uh, on this particular piece of equipment, the continuous fan mode happens to be the low heating speed. So I am actually running too high. There is too much resistance in this duct system. Remember what I said earlier is when you're in the heating, you want that number to be a little bit lower because the 0.5 inches of water column that they typically rate for residential equipment is a cooling number for maximum levels. Now, what I wanted to show you was a very common mistake that technicians make out in the field when measuring total static pressure. Uh, I've seen some of the most experienced guys make this mistake, and it can give you a false positive reading. So I want to show you how to avoid that. Uh, one thing that guys tend to do is, this is my actual static pressure right now. And again, I'm taking my readings between the coil and the furnace. Knock that thing out there. Between the coil and the furnace, and between the filter and the furnace. And that is the correct way to do that. But what guys tend to do out in the field is they tend to go to the easier locations. They tend to be on the outlet side of the coil up here in the plenum area. And then they tend to take their other probe and be in the return air drop area. So they're actually not taking into consideration the resistance value of the filter and the coil. Now that same system that I was just running at, that I was 0.55 or 5.2, I don't remember exactly what it was, but you'll see now with these new readings, not including the coil or the filter, I'm running a 0.24. So that's pretty low. That, that's a pretty good number for heating. It's really low. But it's, very, it's a false positive reading because that's not accurate because I'm not taking into consideration this coil or the filter. Now, I have put over here, since this is a testing facility, I have put a damper in here. So what I'm going to do is simulate some uh, shrunken return duct, high resistance in the return duct. So I wanted to 